You must be wondering what I am doing hiding behind the bushes. But I am not in the field, I am not in the garden, I am not even in the workshop. I am in the comfort of my office. And it's now gone seven o'clock and all the staff have gone away. They go uh, home at half past five these days and all the work has been done. I've done lots of office work today and I also worked on the nursery. But in the evenings when it's quiet, rather than watch uh, television programs which don't really interest me, I spend time doing wiring. I really enjoy wiring. A lot of bonsai take lots and lots of time to, to create. I sometimes feel that if you actually calculated the amount of time you spend on making a bonsai, what is charged for in the price of a bonsai doesn't reflect one's time. These black pines are about 20 years old. We've had them 15 years and they were little seedlings when we got them from uh, a grower and we've grown them for the last 15 years to get them big and then in the last five years they were put in pots, progressively put in pots and just allowed to grow and each year we select the branches which we want and then develop them into more refined trees. So these are what we call partly trained trees. They may not look it but they are all what we call partly trained trees. So let me just take one of them, let's put the others down in case they confuse you too much. As always, I keep working on these trees and never think of recording what I do. So this tree I already started doing some work on. And you can see I have sorted out the branches. I've kept all the main branches and I'm wiring the branches into flat pads. So this is what I've been doing. I will continue doing this so that you can see the progress of this tree. Uh, so this hasn't been started from scratch. I will show you another one that I will start from scratch. But the object is simply to wire all the branches flat so that the pads can start forming. With black pines, as you know, the black pine is a very hardy pine. Japanese black pine is Pinus tangbergii. And it's a tree that you either love or hate. And the reason being, the long needles are very sharp and prickly and very few people know how to deal with these long needles. But if you are patient enough, given time, these needles do get a bit shorter. I would just say in passing that the black pine is one of the great, great favorites of Japanese bonsai growers and uh, enthusiasts. The black pine is considered to be the king of bonsai. Very, very sexist, if you may say. And uh, if, if there is a queen of bonsai, it would be the maple, because the maple is very delicate and beautiful. But the uh, black pine, as I said, is regarded as the king of bonsai. I will show you, or many of you may have seen, the black pine that I've owned since 1974. It's a tree that came into Japan in 1962. It was imported by this company called Bromage & Young. I think I've talked about it before. I will show it to you again after I've done some of these black pines uh, and wired them. They are continuing tasks. They always keep changing and you've got to just Go with the flow, as it were. If it grows in a way that you didn't expect, you probably have to change your design of the tree. But these are just very basic designs I'm showing you. Uh, I will show you in a minute when I can bring the camera close because I'm self-videoing. It's very hard to get someone to come close and show you the detail, but there is quite a lot of detail here. So what I'm doing here now is just arranging everything flat. Everything in sight will be just wired flat. I 
I like working in the evenings when everyone's gone home because I'm not disturbed at all and I have all the time in the world rather than sit and watch television. I do watch a lot of television but when the programs are not interesting I rather do my bonsai. So everything being arranged flat. Let me bring the tree close and show you. You see how the pads are being arranged flat. The trunk has already been wired when it is young. So these pads are going to be kept flat like this. Now there is one branch sticking up like that. And normally people would get rid of it, but I kept it there because if I didn't keep it there, it would leave a big gap. So I've taken that upright branch straight up. I'll show you when I finished wiring it why it is fairly useful. This is where I'm clearly breaking one of the rules because branch should really come from here and not going up like that. But because it's going up there, it fills the gap over here. So I will show you what I'm going to do. I'm trying to learn to wire from the back. As I may have mentioned before, many people tell me, why do you always turn your back? But it's easier to see what you're doing when you have your back to the tree so that I can see it full frontal. The only problem with wiring pines is that you invariably trap the needles in the wiring and your object should be, your aim should be to avoid trapping those branches. Let me now just show you where I've got to with the wiring. So you can see how I've wired the pads. They're all arranged horizontally And I've now come to the apex, and the apex, I have a choice of two. I can either go this way or go this way, but because the line is coming here, I can choose to go up this way and then bring this down as a branch. If there are too many needles, you can cut some of them off. Too many branches, I mean. And if branches are on the wrong side, you can take it to the other side with fine wire. So this is a very long term project. So I've already created the shape. And the apex is going to go there. So that is what I've done for this year. I did tell you that there is a fault here. Instead of just having the branch, I took one branch up there and then took it there because there's a space there. I want to fill that space with that upward growing branch. So every tree is a different situation. This will be a wide flat. Let me just change the camera angle. So let me give you a critique of this tree again. We grow them in progressively larger pots so that it makes the tree strong and we get a thicker trunk. You see the trunk is at least inch to an inch and a half thick compared with the size of my finger. And it was wired into that S shape when it was very, very young. No thicker than a biro, even thinner than that. And these trees, as I said, are about 20 years old. 
So even when we put them progressively into larger and larger pots, this was potted up this way, which isn't going to be the final position. The final position of the pot is going to be like that. So that is going to be the front of the tree. So don't worry how it's growing in the pot because we will always change it at some later date. So what we've done so far is just wire all the branches flat so that we get the pad. And then the branches will lie flat. This was the troublesome branch. So instead of having a branch coming out there and stopping it there, we let one thick branch go up there and then take it there because there's a void in this part of the tree. So that's going to form the right hand side of the tree. There were two leaders. I've taken one leader down to form a pad there. And this is going to be the future apex. It doesn't look anything now, but believe you me, next year the whole head will be very, very uh, dense and complete. So as the tree grows during the coming year, when the new candles come, I'm going to prune them off and this tree will bud back. As I said to you, black pines bud back from old wood. You see how these shoots grow from the old wood. So you don't have to worry. They will grow from old wood very easily. So this is how this tree is going to develop. And that is as much as I will do to this tree for now. <clears throat> Every tree is different, so I'll move on to another. So let us look at this pine. As I always say, every tree is different. So, I don't know what happened to this one. Probably in a moment of madness, I cut off the leader and just grew the two branches. So this is where I just let two branches grow, one on the left, one on the right. And the central leader was taken out maybe about five to 10 years ago when it was very young and other side branches were cut. So it has some form of uh, angular shape, but I'm not really pleased with the shape now. So I may need to train the tree in a slightly different fashion. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. So as you can see, I've propped it up at an angle. I put it at about a 30 degree angle to give a different shape to the tree. So if I shape the tree like this, I may get a better result and it will be more angular. So I'm going to have to take some pretty drastic decisions on this tree. This little branch here, in case you're wondering what it's doing, that's going to be a sacrificial. The longer I keep this branch on, the thicker this trunk will get. So I'm talking of about five years hence, and that will help the trunk to thicken. A lot of these upward shooting side branches I can either wire flat but I don't want too many of them because if I have too many that branch will get inverse taper so I will have to deal with that one and this one if I keep like this I could wire it down I see what happened I'll do that and we'll hope for the best so let me put the camera down and I'll do some wiring and show it to you again so let's look at this one this is a tree that I did about a couple of weeks ago and it already has this very curly trunk which was wired when the tree was very young. So what I've done two weeks ago was to rewire these branches so that we have the pads arranged flatter and this is going to be the future direction of the tree. We have to decide which is the best front. As the tree grows you will get a better view as to how it's developing. This, I told you, was a rather unusual branch. I may cut it off when this part of the tree fills up, but for the time being, I'll keep that. And it can help thicken this part of the trunk, which is the uh, part of the leading shoot. And this is the new leader that I've taken up. So there's a lot of work still to be done on that. So the lead does, doesn't look anything because it doesn't have a crown, but these will be wired flat. But at least the basic structure has been created on this. Uh, there's no need to do too much wiring because I'll only have to take it off again next year. But if it is 
going to cause a problem, then I may put some wire on, like for instance this one. I can decide to wire one of the branches flat so that it doesn't grow upwards. If it grows upwards and becomes too thick, it may be difficult to change the direction of the branch at a later stage. So I'm going to take this wire up. Again, I've got to watch how the wire traverses the trunk because I want it to come up neatly. I hope you are all practicing your wiring because there's no substitute for practice. I can show you as much as I want to, but if at the end of the day you don't practice it, then you won't become good, good at it. <clears throat> So although this tree may look a bit weird now, the structure is there, the S shape is there. This new leader doesn't look very impressive at this point in time, but it will become more interesting. That is as much as I will do to this tree. So I'm now going to wait for the crown to develop. So I won't touch this anymore. We didn't complete this one. You can see the S shape, which is very good. Now these ugly roots, in case someone starts commenting on them, I will have to take it out Although we are in the third week in March, I still have the whole of April in which to repot it. I will take it out and I will tease the roots so I get a better uh, nebari or root spread. So these are ugly roots. So I'm aware of it, but they will be dealt with and we will improve on it. So this tree will probably end up maybe that angle. I will just take the tree out of its pot because I always like to show people the mycelium. I'm trying to find the end of the wire where I tied it. I can't find it. So I shall cut it. I don't like wasting wire. So in the space of a year, I will just show you how strong this tree has grown. Oh, gosh. And in the space of a year, You can see it's a matted root ball, absolutely tight. So black pines are very, very vigorous trees, exceedingly vigorous. This is a complete matted root ball here. So this tree will probably end up more at this angle. because I want one of these shoots to be the apex. I always find it difficult to work from the back of the tree, that's why I'm hesitating.
So I'll try and work as normally as I can. I'm just going to wire two more branches. I feel very difficult to work from the back, so I'm working from the front. I know that viewers don't get the benefit of the front view, but I wouldn't be able to work properly, so you won't see a good result. Advantages and disadvantages of self-videoing. If I had a cameraman, handy it would have been easier but not to worry we can still work I'm taking the tips out by taking the tips out I can encourage back budding so these are the terms I'm sure you have learned to live with back budding with pines mentioned on many occasions, pines are an acquired taste. If you've not worked with pines, you don't appreciate how beautiful they are. They only become beautiful when they've had a lot of training and the needles get smaller. At this stage when they're still being trained, they always remind me of the bottle brush. So there's lots more to wire. Let's see, I can wire this on the apex. I work in the evenings when the mood takes me. I don't always work into the night. And although I've had a very busy day today, somehow I'm in the mood to do work because it's been a lovely spring day. You see the video I did off my spring walk. Black pines, by the way, because they have such long needles, very often when they're shown at exhibitions, I believe even the Japanese, they cut the long needles to make them appear shorter. And they cut it just before the exhibition because they would turn, the tips would turn brown if it was left for more than a week. So for the next few days after cutting, it doesn't show. That's what I've been told. But if you keep the pots, I mean the pines pot bound, the needles do reduce in size. So you don't have to worry too much about that. Trying to wire these pads as much as possible. I remember when I used to visit Japan, 
this is the sort of job that the whole family does. Husband and wife, they sit either during the day or in the evening and keep wiring and trimming. So it's a 24-hour job because most of the nurseries are family businesses. They don't have just employees who work and then when five o'clock comes, they buzz off home. But everyone works right into the night. So I keep reminding you guys, why do you think bonsai costs so much? This tree, I would have done maybe two, two or three hours work already this year. Multiply it 20 times. And that is just the trimming. I've got to do the watering. So over a course of many, many years, the number of man hours that is spent on each tree uh, doesn't make the tree really economic if you did a proper cost analysis. But this is what bonsai is about. A lot of this is done for the love of it. So let me bring the camera closer because you then don't get a better view with it propped up there. Why these flat? I've also got to bear in mind that this is not a tree that is being wired for exhibition. This is being wired just to train it in the right direction. The branch is being trained so that they grow in the right direction. So it's very rough wiring, what we call structural wiring, if I can use that term. It's not refinement wiring. Let me just bring the camera. So let's look at this tree. You must be wondering why some of these branches are so bare, these so bare. But these little shoots are what we call the buds that can grow. And I hope that they will back bud and I'll get more shoots growing along there. So although they may look a bit bare now, given another year, it will back bud and fill out quite a lot. Let me turn to this one and I can show you what back budding means and you can see here the structure of these pads if you look at this little shoot there that is a back bud see from the very old wood so you get all these shoots coming from the old wood like this one here this also is grown from very old wood so this whole pad will get a lot of these shoots growing as back buds let's look at this one can you see from the old wood how this is growing. So this is what happens when you prune hard and you get back budding. So that's another bud growing there. So all these young shoots from the old wood come as a result of pruning. But you have to wait quite a while for the back buds to appear. So I will just keep doing some of these. I know it could be a bit boring and some of you don't mind being bored, but this gives you some idea, I hope, of what is entailed in refining these pines. I will carry on doing more and I will show you the progression of each of these trees. So this is another pine and if I can just bring the tree close and show you what I did last year, this scar here was a thick branch and I cut off the main branch and let a side shoot grow to make the new leader. So there was a cut made here. 
these were small branches that grew and you can again see how bud, 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 uh, bud back has taken place. I cut the tip of this branch over here and by cutting it there I got back budding over here. This little shoot here has only grown last year so we'll get lots of new shoots to form the pad. So if you look closely at the trunk you will find a lot of little shoots which grow as a result of back budding. <coughs> so this tree although it's planted like this because the way I pruned it this is going to be the new front of the tree. So we can wire these flat this is already wired and then these have to be wired flat. So there's constantly a reassessment of the situation and we have to keep wiring and rewiring. So this one, let me just show you how I would deal with this one. Don't worry about needles. The more you pluck, the more it encourages back budding to occur on the branch that you have plucked the needles from. And I will show you how to deal with the tips as well. I should be using the cheapest possible wire. I don't know why I keep using this brown wire. I can use cheaper clear aluminum wire just to save on cost. But I do recycle a lot of wire. I use the wire three or four times. The only trouble is that it's not always the right length that you want, but nevertheless they can still be recycled. So nothing ever gets wasted. Don't worry if the needles go that way because during the growing season the needles will look upwards. Where there are three branches I usually not just prune the tips but I let the downward one grow as the new branch and then this becomes the pad like that. If a branch is getting too long I can take it off unless I want to develop it into a new leading shoot. The tips are always pruned off. I always prune the tips so that it doesn't get too long and straggly. This keeps the length of the branch in control. These can be wide flat. Now I haven't taken the tip of that out. So I don't wait for the candles to go, I just take it out. Some people wait for the candles, but if you wait for the candles you may get too much growth. So this can be wide flat to make the pad. And I can give a little twist to the top. So all these needles I can pluck off. It makes the wiring easier. And then use the right gray wire to create the apex. Thin branches I tend to wire loosely so that I don't strangle it. It's just to guide it in the direction I want it to grow. And then the top I can always bend it to give the curve going in the correct direction or the direction I want it to grow.
that's springing up, I don't want that. I'll, I'll keep this branch because I want to thicken this branch, so I will keep it even if it's going to be used as a sacrificial. I find that the black pine of all the pines is the one that backbuds the easiest. The Scots pine backbuds easily. White pine in temperate countries is more reluctant to bud back. But in Japan, where they have a very hot summer, they do okay. And then I can do something with that. I can, I'll use this as the needle and bring this down. But I won't do it at this stage, I'll let it grow first. If I do it at this stage, I might break the branch. That can be wired flat. So as I said, this is only what we call directional wiring and wiring for training. This is not wiring for exhibition. I will get around to showing you pines that are more developed as a result of this wiring, but this batch are all trees at this particular stage of training. So that's all I would do to this one for now. You can see the interesting trunk line that's been developed. So that is the main, uh, I would say, purpose of wiring at this stage, just to get the trunk lines, all the branches in the right place, choosing the right branches. And we hope that the pads will develop fully in time. So that's as much as I will do to this one. Most of these trees will have to have their roots teased out to get better nibari. You can see the massive roots. So this one is very interesting. What a lot of needles. All these needles have grown last year and it is so dense you can't even see the trunk for the needles. But the needles serve a purpose. They make the tree strong. Every tree is different, every tree is interesting. I also look at the tree and say to myself, do I want this to be a long-term tree where I'm growing longer branches, or do I want a more instant bonsai? in which case I will try and refine the tree or start refining the tree from now. So because this trunk line is so interesting, I will just do something different, different from what I've done to the other ones, to show you how I approach this particular subject. There is also one potential problem here if you look closely here, there is one, two, three, four, five branches radiating from that central point. And if I leave them all to grow, it will cause inverse taper over here. That will start forming a bulge. So I have to think of taking some of those branches off. So I'm going to be a bit radical with this particular tree. I have so many that I can afford to, not waste, but experiment on this particular tree. 
So I can see that it's got a very interesting trunk line and because there are five branches there, I don't want too much inverse taper, so I'm going to cut quite a lot off. So hold your breath because I'm going to do some radical pruning. Really radical pruning. So I'm going to try and make the tree more like a finished tree. I know that it will back bud, so I'm not worried in the least about it losing all these branches. I can also, if I wanted to, regrow new branches very easily. So I'm trying to look for a small tree out of this bush. So from this point, you can see there are two branches, this one and that one, this one and that one. So we don't need both, so I'm going to take one of them off. So I'm going to take this one off. So already the tree is looking a bit thinner, a bit smarter. Take that branch out that way. So what I'm trying to show is that should you want to get a more instant look, you can do it because most of the trees that we've been working on are long-term projects. I'm looking to produce a much bigger tree and that's why I don't tend to prune them hard back. But I'm just going to show you how I can make this look more presentable by looking at the tree on a slightly smaller scale and with a little more refinement. So what do I do with this long one? I'm going to make this a branch coming down this way to form the triangles. So don't forget, most of the shapes in bonsai are the triangular shape. As long as you create the triangular shape, you can't go far wrong. How easy is that? I make it too simple. I'm taking too much mystique out. But always remember that bonsai is like fine wine. The longer you wait, the more refinement you create, the better the quality of the tree. So although 
I am showing you how quickly you can achieve results. Don't forget there is a longer term dimension to bonsai. I hate for people to think that I'm giving the wrong impression that bonsai doesn't entail a long time scale. So I'm now going to wire this branch. So what can I link it to? I link it to this and that. I did a workshop for a person today and I was very pleased that she understood wiring well and she did some very good wiring. And once a person understands what wiring is all about, progress will come very rapidly. So don't be put off. The more you practice, the better you get at it. No, I think I've gone the wrong way. I think I'll start again. When you do a double, it's always important to make sure you want to go about it the right way because I want to link the bottom one. How do I get to the top from the bottom branch? I'm only linking a little bit to form the anchor. There's so many back buds, so many small buds, but even if I knock them off accidentally, I don't have to worry. I will get more next year, or this coming year. We're only starting the spring, so there's lots of growth still to come. And because there's a knob here, I was telling you about the inverse taper, I might as well get rid of that knobbly bit and hope that it will callous and heal. Pines heal very easily because of the resin. Any cut you make heals itself very rapidly. the wire to go in the same direction as the first coil of wire so I've got to find a way of matching it which I've finally managed to do and now I take it onto this long branch Should you trap the needles with the wire, it doesn't matter. The needles will die off and then you can just remove the dead needles during the coming year. But if you want to, you can remove the needles now. There's a long shoot here. I'll just tip the ends to make it bud back. These candles are already starting to grow. I'll just remove all the candles at this stage. I'm not even going to wait for the candles to start growing. No point. course I'm not removing every single needle because if I did that you wouldn't have any needles left. It's really just leaving the needles at the tip of the shoot. So you can see how I'm doing it. Of course these needles will get short. I'm just cutting them to show you the principle 
they're not meant to be that long. But if I leave the needles long, it strengthens the branch because needles are the food factories for the branch. So that is the shape of that tree. I've made this deliberately a small tree by taking the small branches and wiring them. There will be a lot of back budding because I'm taking the tips of the shoots out. So when this forms a head, it will be a nice dome shape. So you can see, rather than have a big tree like so, I've made this a much smaller tree. They are all the same age, same size, but I've decided to go for the smaller option of this tree. So this is slightly different from the rest. Again, they've got lovely movement in the trunk, and that movement will carry on. And we can carry on improving the Nibari. This will be repotted in the coming couple of weeks and then grown on to form uh, a better shape. Now I'll just do one more. I don't want to take too much time. This was one that I looked at earlier. I think I did look at this earlier on, didn't I? We were undecided what to do about the planting angle. Let me just undo the wire, I'll show you what I mean. Because if it starts off one shape, I can always change the shape by changing the choice of apex. Okay, I've undone the wire. Let's take the tree out of the pot. And as always with pines, always remind you, look at that white stuff. That's the mycelium or the beneficial fungus. All pines, if they're growing well, should have a lot of the mycelium. So this tree, although it was growing like so, at this angle, we can choose a new apex. So what if I place the tree at that angle? I can then make that the apex and then decide what to do with this. This can become too overpowering. So let me thin this out a little bit. If you just be a bit patient, I'm going to show you what I've suddenly realized. What I thought was the front is now going to be the back. And the back which I'm looking at now will become the front. Wait till I've done this bit of wiring and I'll show you what I mean. So that was the front originally, but I've discovered that this is as nice as the front. So here we are. This was previously the back, but it looks better as the front. So I'm going to train the tree, this line, and that's going to be the apex. This, remember, was just a side branch. I'd taken the leader out many years ago from there. So these two side branches, this is a side branch, this is a side branch, this side branch has become the new leader. So it's taken about five years to get to this stage. And these are going to be wired there, so I've got the triangle. So that is the future direction of that tree. I can do some more wiring, but uh, I won't show you that. I'll do it and then show you the end result. So this is how this tree has turned out. I've used the back as the new front, and that's the shape of the tree. This tree must be about 
50 to 60 centimeter, more like 60 centimeter tall. And the trunk is already like an inch and a bit, which is over 10 centimeter. I've got to improve the nibari. And look at all this back budding. This is what we call back budding. From the old wood, you get these new branches growing. So black pine are very prolific in the way they back bud. So you have no worries at all about the future growth and development of this tree. So you can buy them at this stage or you can leave it here and we can improve them even more. So this is another aspect of training black pines. Black pines are very tough trees, much easier to train than the Scots pines. Their branches are more manageable. The Scots pines have very floppy thin branches which are difficult to wire and difficult to hold in shape. So black pines can be grown from seed quite easily, but grow them strongly in pots or in the ground. And then at the right stage, you can take them and start training them. But the S shape needs to be developed when they're quite young. So I hope this is enough of the lessons about black pine. I will return to them, no doubt, because that's not the end. So just in one hour, I've done about four trees. And I've got to spend many hours to get through the couple of hundred pines that we have. So there you are. Thank you very much. Thank you.